Welcome back to the Dundonald International Ice Bowl. This week we're going to be looking at some double jumps. We still have our six skaters, but I'm going to start with Kathy Harrison, and we're going to start with a single axle. So shall I show you one first? Okay. <laughs> Right, would you like to try one? Good, that's really quite good. Now, do you remember when we were talking about the three jump? Yes. Which is the same takeoff as the axle, isn't it? Yes. We were talking about trying to pass the leg through. Yes. Would you like to do a three jump for me and show me how you can pass the leg? Right. And really try and stretch the legs in the air. Okay? Yes. So a nice three jump. Yes, that was the one. Did you feel how that took you, took you yes. with it? Okay, now you have to try and get exactly the same feeling on the single axle. Nice. Yes, now that was a bit better. That was a, actually a nice high jump, but what do you think happened in the air? Why weren't you able to land it? Pardon? I think I let go, sort of. Uh-huh. Yeah, what position do you think you were in when you came down with the five of shoulders are concerned? Do you think they were square, or do you think they'd gone a bit round? I can't right. I think they'd gone round, too. OK, let's try to keep the shoulders square. Good. I think I'm most pleased about the landing position being it's very checked and controlled and I think you'll always be able to hold on to the edge if you always land that way. But I would say that although you're working on the doubles, you must keep going back to the singles and keep trying to learn to pass the leg, especially in the, uh, the three jump and the axle. Okay? Yes. Good. Thank you. Right, Neil. Let's see a nice single axle. Okay. All right, now, it's a very good takeoff. You go right over the toe and there's no skid, and that's very good. Now, where do you think your legs are in the air? Slightly wrapped. Yes, slightly wrapped. Now, are you trying to put your legs like that? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Good. <laughs> so, what I would like to see is for you to do the same thing on the takeoff as you do on a three jump. Take the leg right through and just stretch them down in the air like this and then land the axle. Right. No feeling of crossing at all. Right. Just completely straight down. Okay, good. Now, it, I saw definitely that your leg passed and that you were in this moment, and then you did that. Okay, can you try just to press down into your skates and keep both legs straight? Okay. Exactly like that. Yeah, like that. That was better. How did that feel? Open. Had a bit of fly at the front. It yeah. started to shoot through. Now, if you can keep with this idea and try and extend the leg even Further. more at the front and not right. cross them at all. Because right. Can you feel that they're still crossing a little bit? A little bit. Yes, a little bit. OK, let's try a few, exactly the same thing and really work to get the leg by. Good. That was, the legs were good. You all right? Yeah. OK. Now, I, I think it's really encouraging that you can change so quickly when you're asked to do so. Now, you see how short from the three turn to the takeoff it is? It's only, you know, from there to there. See if you can, before you take off, go at least another good foot, so it gives you more time, in other words, mm -hmm. to get ready for the jump. Yeah. OK? All right. Okay. 
Well, that's not too bad. I would say that you need longer after the three turn right. before you jump. Try and pass this leg that way. And if you can, always. It's fine to be here. It's not fine to be there. Um, OK? Yeah. All right, thanks very much. OK. Well, I'm going to do a double loop, and then we're going to work on double loops, all right? All right. That's a double loop. Now, would you like to show me one, please? Okay, pretty good, pretty good. It's a little, it was very good. It's a bit I'm, heavy. I'm only going to nitpick, I'm not going to, uh, but this was a little bit on the toe. Yeah. And the more you go on the toe at the beginning of it, the more you're cutting down your spring in a way, because it's bringing you, it's slowing you down. So. When, uh, when you're sitting on the backwards edge, going into the loop, try to, to really get the weight through the foot, but not so much on the toe. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, on the and ball of the foot. Yes, right on the ball of the foot. And also try and stretch the front foot. Yes, the more you can stretch through here, the better the spring and the snap will be of the turn. All right. OK, I think that was a little better. Now, let's see this double one. I know you're landing on the forward inside and turning off. But if you were to do the same thing and keep your hips and your feet better crossed, very low, you know, as we do on the backward spin here that we've worked on, if you could get that same feeling in the air, take the cross position that you should have in the air. That's right. Now, you see how you have a tendency for this foot to be like that. Mm -hmm. If you could feel this one like that, I think you'd stand a better chance of coming down backwards. Okay. All right. You're not ever really tight in the air. The, the, the legs are like that. And I think until you get the legs in a tighter position like this, you're going to have a problem with this. OK, do me a nice single one and really show me how far you can pass the free leg on a single axle. The position in the air is still sort of like that, instead of really turned in. If you look at someone like Scott Hamilton do a double axle, you'll notice that his legs are really like one cylinder beneath him and not two. Do you understand? And I think that's the key to it, really. OK? OK, thank, thank you. you. OK, we did some spins last week, some basic spins. Now we're going to put some of those together in what we call combination spins, which are a requirement in all competitions. So let's start out with some of the more simple ones. Let's see, for instance, a camel spin, a parallel spin, sit spin. Um, I'll just try and explain to you what I think helps in this situation. Again, try and step immediately into the position. Now in one move, right down here. And then maybe something here, change and step out. Right, so, Norma, how about a parallel sit spin? I'll try. Good, good, good. Good. 
good. That's really not bad at all. Dizzy. Dizzy, <laughs> Very yes. Very dizzy. Um, I would say on the camel spin, which you're turning very well, you're, you're, the, the way your skate turns on the ice is excellent. Um, can you try and think of lifting the toe up so that we don't get a bit of, you know, the droop toe at the this, end? Yes, yes, I know what you mean. Yes. Turn my foot out. Yes, it's a matter of turning it out, but don't let it drop, drop. down. So almost think of turning it up. I mean, you can't really do that, but yes. that's the, the feeling you must have in your mind. Yes. And then when you've got this leg out, which gives, which has a lot of um, power in it, bring it round in one movement, okay? And you'll find that the, the sit spin will really buzz then if you yes. do that. Right. So you have to be very strong in the tummy to counteract. <laughs> Toe, 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 that's it, better. Okay. Again. It's the, just it's getting the, the leg round. It's getting the leg round. What are you thinking of doing, exactly? Your, your leg is up here. I'm trying, but I find the force. Yes. I just can't seem to, to go against the force of, yes. the, of the spin. Uh-huh. Because as the, the weight of the... When we're spinning, the thing that makes your arms heavier is in fact that the blood goes down towards your fingers, as, you know, um, water in a bucket will go to the end. And you know that tingly sensation that we get when we spin very fast? It's like pins and needles in the hands. That's simply because the blood is being forced down and it's pressuring the veins, as it were. So you have to use that. That's your friend, yes. prickly friend, but your friend. Um, and you have to try and use it. So let's do one more, Norma, and really feel that you try and describe a big arc with your foot in the... And ha arms, is what, would the arms help yes, as well? Yes, the arms certainly, around? because usually if the camel spin is here, you can use that arm as well to increase the power. Okay, and go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right, Terry. <laughs> what? Same thing. Now, I I'm think not, you're I'm a bit... I'm a bit dubious about these, yeah. It's a bit... Yes. So, let's just see from you. Do you do a sit spin? You do a very Slightly. Good... Not a very good one, though. You do... Um... Well, let's just see you do a sit spin. Right, well, have a go at that. Okay. Have a go. Okay. Not now, an awfully good sense, but... Not an awfully bad start, either. The way you brought your leg round was excellent. I mean, you saw the, the speed and the power that that created. The thing I think that you tend... Because there is a lot of weight in this leg and it's coming around, it will tend to throw you back on the skate like that, which is kind of what happened to you. So you have to counteract that great force which is coming around you by instead of allowing yourself to go back using your stomach and the way we talked about on a, uh, um, a, um, a teapot, teapot yeah. bringing your weight forward there so have another go good 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 all right that's a good <coughs> if you practice that you could get it the thing i'd say is that you're your first edge here, you're really pushing harder than you need. And it's being a little bit unhelpful. Going into it. Yes, you're yeah, actually yeah. giving this edge such a... that at the moment you're not able to control it. Yeah, that's So right. try one a little calmer. Okay, well done. while well, I'm being strapped up with a camera so that I can show you what a skater sees as we go around the ice. Many people always ask me, well, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Well, I can't tell you what it, well, I can explain to you what it feels like, but I'd like you to be able to see 
a little bit of the speed and the angles that we see as we are skating around. You ready? <laughs> Okie doke, all right? Probably the most asked question is, well, how do you stop from being dizzy when you spin? Well, you can see what I can see now while we're spinning. This is not quite as fast as I maybe could go without this pack on my back. But that's what we see, just a blur of color and light. And how do you stop front? That's practice. <laughs> Now, how do you choose the music you're going to skate to? Well, this, there are no rules about what kind of music one must skate to in free skating, although there are some in ice dancing which demand that various changes of tempo must happen. But uh, for a young person, say for Kathy or Neil, one piece of music would be quite sufficient because the programs are shorter, maybe a minute and a half and two minutes in length. So I think one has to listen to music as much as possible on the radio, wherever you can, and try and learn what it is that you like, what it is that inspires you to move and to, in fact, feel good inside. What kind of music do you like, Neil? Like pop music. You like pop music? Do you yeah. like to skate to pop music? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever listen to anything other than pop music? I mean, do you ever hear any music that might be called classical? Or not really. Not really. What about you, Kathy? Jazz music. I like um, fast music, um, whatever goes with my style of skating. Generally, I like, I like very fast music and then just a total change, something very slow and elegant. Mm -hmm. Yes, variation in music because one has to show different aspects of, the, of your skating. But the thing that I don't like to see is someone who takes, you know, starts off with a, a minute of Verdi and then goes into 30 seconds of, you know, Stravinsky yes. and then a bit of yes. the Beatles and then, you know, yes. some disco thing at no. the end because I think musically it's, it's really an affront. Yes. <laughs> and I wonder how the composers would feel, yet alone anyone else. Yes. Now, I understand that, you know, most of us, you, Neil says, you know, you like pop music. But I would suggest that there are other kinds of music. I mean, for instance, do you like the music we skated to on the ice in the last yeah. program? Yes, well, that's not pop music. That, that's a light classical piece. It's not inaccessible, and it's, it's appropriate for the kind of timing and movement of skating. Um, I noticed just now there was some music by Glasnoff on, and you took off like a bat, which was great. And you didn't, that's, you responded to that. So, Try and look around you, keep your ears open, listen to the radio, you know, um, and learn about music because, after all, you're going to try and express music. So you must try and learn a little bit about it. All kinds of music, find out what you like. Now, have you ever seen Janet Lynn skate? Do you know who she is? No, well, that's something we're going to rectify. Janet is I think one of the greatest of all skaters. We're going to watch a piece that is maybe 14 years ago now. And you tell me afterwards if you think anyone has come near this kind of artistry. The champion of the United States, Janet Lynn. Fourth overall in the world championship, but personally satisfying for her because she provided the championship with its best free skating performance of the week. Her program won two maximum six marks. She lived up to her reputation as the best lady free skater in the world. Look at her free foot on those turns, how nicely it turned out. Now this is just a three turn. Watch her free leg on the axle.
See the beautiful tightness of the land and the way the jump is so fluid. There's, it's not a whole endless preparation. It's just up there, beautifully fluid. and just a simple series of steps like that. How enjoyable. Marvelous sense of freedom and expanse in the way she skates. to the left and to the right. So always the free leg beautifully extended and lined. But she's skating with her whole, not just her whole body, but her whole self. There's a very emotional, expressive quality about the very steps themselves. And look at that, I mean, that's a, a gorgeous double axle. And, then, and lovely, turned out three leg. Well, what did you all think of that? Very nice. Have you ever seen anyone skate quite like that recently? No. No. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, neither have I. <laughs> I'd love to skate like that, with maybe um, a few triples, but yes. to skate well, like that and hold everyone's attention like that, I mean, we were all totally engrossed in it, so, I mean... If that can do it to us, then to an mm. audience, I yes. Yeah, so and it's interesting, that. you see, because although we have to have the triples if you're going to be in the competitions, that isn't the only way. It's simply part of the picture. And the, the great skaters have to have both the technique and some expression. Next week, we shall be looking at triple jumps and go on with some more advanced skating. And I hope you can join us then. And in fact, John Curry will be back on the ice at the same time tomorrow.